So we'll call the meeting to order at 4.34. Got a sign in sheet. Sign in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we've got a, yeah, we've got a speaker phone. So let's see how this goes. So I'll run down the agenda so everybody knows how kind of things are going to progress today. So first we're going to approve the minutes. Um, and then we have a call with the VSBA. Um, they're going to share with us some things that they could provide around superintendent search. Then we'll have a call with Mark Andrews, who's a former superintendent and is working with Washington Central on their superintendent search. That'll be at 5. And then um, we'll continue the conversation and have some public comments um, at that time. Sound good? Okay. So, the approval of the minutes. I never motioned before to do this, so are we oh. moving to approve the minutes? Yeah, we okay. as well. Will people get some? We'll approve the minutes. Second? Oh, we have to take notes. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> okay. All um, in favor of approving the minutes? Aye. Aye. Any Aye. names? Abstention? Good. Okay. So I guess we're ready to. Are you, he's not calling us. We're calling. Him. We're calling her. her. So it's Sue, her. It's Sue Siglowski. Okay. Let's see. Oh, I don't know how to do this, but I assume. Okay. Can I give you the number? Yep. Oh yeah. Do you want to? Do you want to take that? It's the. Sure, I'm a visual person. <laughs> okay. Sue Siglowski. Yes. Okay. I wonder if we can dial along with this. Um, I think it's dial eight. Oh, Steve's not here. I think dial eight first. Eight for outside one. It will let will it let us dial long distance? Oh, all right. Do I use a cell phone? <laughs> yeah, that's a different procedure, which we don't. We don't know. Okay. Uh, so we kind of think that the phone operator is here. Do you want to just use a cell phone? Cell phone. Cell phone might work. Yeah. You can't call from a classroom. That's what I I was like, really? They're going to allow that? Yeah. All right. Hold that Let's see. I like that money saving for uh, <laughs> technology. <laughs> CSU. Um, we'll give you a call back in a few minutes. Thanks. Okay. That is definitely the number she gave me. Maybe in the meanwhile we can see if what company is that? Uh, this is the VSBA. <laughs> well, we wait for her. We could either go see about Steve or we could give short updates on the calls that we did have. That would be good. I would love to hear how the other call went. Okay. David, you want to, or? You uh, yeah, let me find it again. <clears throat> come back, come back. <clears throat> so in the interim, we only had calls with NASDAQ? Yeah, that was, um, I think, one, yesterday. Right? Yeah, the, um, the uh, NASDAQ designs their search around our needs. Uh, there are 300 affiliated districts that they work with on things like executive searches and, and uh, other searches and also special ed assessments and all kinds of uh, professional services. Um, they've had a couple of Vermonters on their board. Uh, national search is standard for them. Um, it's the most helpful and economical. And um, they do provide outreach to their proprietary national network. They, um, they have colleges in their network and they send out hard cap copy on electronic outreach. Um, the proprietary national network is available a la carte. 
um, you don't without you don't have to purchase their whole package from twelve to twenty thousand dollars. You can for between I think three and five you can get um, access to that network. And what that means beyond the the the, the um, educational so like school spring and um, what was the other one A A S A and then top school yeah. jobs, yeah. which is another. Um, if I, I think it's more than that, but that was what they specifically mentioned. Uh, they said it's not easy to attract candidates in Vermont to Vermont. Um, they uh, can, uh, they are known for, or they, they um, advertise that they um, cr can um, implement authentic focus groups, uh, six to ten. They can do electronic surveys and interviews, and they can present. They will present that to the board as data basically to develop a profile for the community 120 days is typical for the process that's four months um, it takes six, they recommend s an anticipating six weeks I think this is to true. develop the <laughs> um, applicants pool hello hey how are you more later good thanks um, can I put you on speakerphone Okay, all right, hold on. Okay, hold on a moment. Hopefully I can do this, there we go. Okay, Sue, can you hear us? Yeah. Okay, so, oh, here we go, we could try that. <laughs> I don't know if everyone wants to introduce themselves or. <laughs> Hi Sue, it's Christina Naylor, I think we've met. <laughs> Hi Christina, how are you? I'm well, how are you? Good. Good. Hi Sue, Emily Murphy Core from Brattleboro. And Dave Scholes from Brown Hi. 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 Um, so with another group, we just started by saying, would you like to give us your elevator pitch? And that usually leads us to asking more questions. Okay. Well, um, because I'm in my car, I'm pulled over some of my way home, and uh, someone needed to get by me. Uh, Um, helping screen the 
candidates, helping set up the interviews, um, really just being the person that uh, keeps everything going for the committee, um, because oftentimes uh, board members don't have the time to devote to that. It's a a pretty um, time-intensive process if you want to get through the whole thing in a good amount of time. So I guess that's my um, my short description of it. Um, do you have any questions? What uh, this Sue? So this is Christina. What do you typically see as a time frame for the searches? Um, you mean how long they usually take? Exactly. Yeah. typically the places that you would be searching through? For superintendents? Um, yes. Candidates? Yes. Um, well, we would be putting the, the ad. Uh, I know that they definitely use Full Spring for the ad. Um, there may be other places that you can advertise as well. Um, to advertise in national publications is more expensive. Um, but you will possibly attract, you know, a different um, set of applicants by doing that. And um, there are there are times that we may know of superintendents that are looking that we may let them know about the the ad once it's up. Um, but we don't necessarily go go you know sort of like head hunting searching for people for you it um that's that's not typically how it goes um so if you're i could i could talk to Susan and say she, she's done that at all but i don't think that she has do you have any um any experience in in uh, or any any um methods of identify or getting the application materials in front of uh, qualified candidates of color or any experience or any um, resources or sites that you can use? I'm sorry, I didn't, I could, I heard what you said about do you have any experience, but I couldn't hear the rest of it, it kind of uh, was muffled. Okay, I think maybe because it's sitting on my glove. <laughs> but the, um, <laughs> Do you have any resources to uh, identify or, or get the uh, application materials before candidates, qualified candidates of color? Do we have any materials? Is that what you asked? No. Uh, do you have any or any uh, any contacts, or have you have you okay. identified that uh, as a specific area to try and find candidates? That'd be great. Yes. Uh, so Sue, it's Christina again. Um, I'm, you, you know, we are in, we are a newly emerged board, and so I think it's we don't even have a vision statement or mission statement for our board, and it's making it I think even more challenging to then as a newly merged district to think about a mission, vision, statement for searching for the superintendent. Can you describe a little bit how that process would look? Because even though we've taken, we did have a, a fairly, you know, an open public meeting and heard from a lot of stakeholders, but how you hone from that process into um, a job description is still a long walk and wonder if you know about that process at all. About the process 
Oh. Coming up with a uh, vision and mission statement. A vision, a vision for what kind of superintendent you want, and then put that into a job description. Exactly right. Yes, because I came to the first meeting armed with that job description. Thank you so much for for helping us with that. Um, it was good to have that going into this next search. Um, more sort of create a vision of vision of what we're looking for in the educational leader for our district, which is somewhat different than the job description which we created for an evaluation. I mean, I think that's a great jumping off point for the nuts and bolts, but I think. Um, getting to the vision is the harder piece as we're merging as we're merging our visions together as a district that's the piece yeah. that i think it would be interesting to hear if there's a process to work with districts developing that vision for the leadership position yeah i think that that fits more into the strategic planning um part of our work and but it certainly is is can be included in a superintendent um, if, if it's a district that's in your situation that really um, needs to do that work in order to do the search and and hire a superintendent that's going to be best for your district. So that work, um, you know, is it's hard to accomplish in a short period of time, which I'm sure you realize. Um, and it, it oftentimes is important to bring the community in as well to talk about that. So uh, it may be that that's the first step that you want to take. Um, and, and I realize that you only have you know, you, you don't have a lot of time, um, but, you know, maybe it seems like that might be something that you want to talk about is, is that so important that we really need to get that in place before we embark on a search? And um, maybe an interim for a year would be a good strategy so that you would be able to um, make sure that you the time to do that um, work. Have you thought about that at all? Uh, we've, yes. we've thought about it. It's not the route we want to go. Um, we're hoping we're hoping to get it done, but you know we had, we're, we recognize that may have to be what happens. Yeah, I'm not advocating for that. I'm just like, yeah. putting it out there as an option for you, but. You could certainly at least, you know, start with a um, a board retreat, um, and at least then you you may be able to do some of the work of the goals for your district for the next um, year. I found when I was on a newly merged board that it was really difficult to say, you know, we're going to do planning for the next five years because you just, there's so many things that you really need to do in the first year. Um, so, and, and the second year. And um, so when, when I was on the newly merged board, we found that it was a lot easier for us to just do 
we started out with this tool for the first year. Um, so that may be a way to approach it. Sue, it's Carrie. Um, this might be an inappropriate question, but can you tell us how well the other searches are going? And I guess I'm looking to find out, are you having a, an easy time finding a qualified wide pool of candidates? We, yes. we are, sorry, we're all sort of like thinking and looking over notes. <laughs> oh, that's okay. I just to make sure I have lots of So we can maybe open up if there is anybody else who has a question oh, yeah. for Sue or something that we've missed. We're in a public meeting. We've got about 15 people here with us. Would it be worth asking for a uh, written proposal from the Vermont School Board? Oh, we've got, yeah. Oh, you already we, have it. We've yeah. got their, uh, so their list. Could you, Is that on the web? That might be good to share. It, we could put it there. So um, maybe it'd be good. We have the proposal, but I don't think everybody else has seen it. So maybe it'd be good to also say what the pricing is. Is that something that we should? What the pricing is? Yeah. yeah. I did, yeah, I did with the board, so I can read it off if you're, I don't want you to be distracted. Um, <laughs> so oh, the, no, I'm, yeah. I'm not driving right now, yeah. pulled over, but yeah, yeah. I just, the, the pricing is $8,500 mm -hmm. for um, the first year, and then the other thing is I had uh, called Carrie to tell her that the VSBA board met last week, and they um, decided that Superintendent searches and evaluations will not be available to non-members. The reason for that decision um, it was really to make sure that the services are available to members because we have um, a small staff and those two services are in um, high demand and so they wanted to make sure that they're available to members. So. That the price is Go ahead. 
So is there any um, district chair you could, uh, board chair you could point us to that might give us a, a reference? Sounds good. Okay. I'm making myself a note right now. And I can email you later as well. <laughs> okay. So anything else or can so still continue I think to drive? Answer <laughs> questions and um, the reference questions. <laughs> oh, yep. I apologize for coming in late and perhaps this was in there, but um, what is the cost of becoming a member? $9,964, I believe. That's correct. <laughs> Thank you. So I think you've answered all our questions, Sue. Um, we really appreciate you being available for this meeting and I guess we'll be in contact, right? Yeah, sounds good. Have a good holiday, Sue. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Sue. Thank you. Drive careful. I will, I will. Have a happy holidays, and I hope everyone gets a chance to come to the uh, Sunday Lunch Club meeting. Um, we Sounds good. Good, pl good plug you good, got yeah. in there, Sue. Good work, good work. You've got a TV audience for that yeah. one. Thanks, Sue. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Okay. Oh, look, it's 5 o'clock. And it's 5 o'clock. <laughs> is Nesdek also long distance? Uh, this uh, is Mark Andrews. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to give us a, like, your, I mean, you've talked to him, right? So he came recommended from two districts, OSSU and um, Washington Central. Uh, OSSU used, them, used him last year. Washington Central's winding up a search right now. They both were really pleased with him. He is, for those searches, he's $5,000, but he's located a little north of Burlington, I believe. So he would have, uh, did he send it? Yes, I did. I did. Yeah, I, I think, think you sent it to us. I sent it to you, but I don't yeah. think I ever opened it to see what oh, okay. it was going to be. Um, so no, um, he sent his resume and a search proposal. But did it include the dollars in it? Uh, ba -ba -ba. Um, contract conditions, pay, uh, 10,000. 10,000. 10,000, but that does include in district once weekly, January through April. Um, uh, we would be dealing with weekly overnight accommodations and mileage reimbursement. We would have to reimburse for the accommodations on top of the 10,000? That's what it's looking yeah, it like. like. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because if he doesn't, because I mean, he said he. I think he's very hands-on, mm -hmm. and so he said he was going back and forth to Washington Central for a meeting in the morning with administrators, and then a meeting in the evening with parents. And so I think that is kind of the search that he outlined here. He's a former superintendent in Essex, Vermont, um, and I think I passed along to you. He said, "Oh, you know, you're. It's getting late." And, yeah. <laughs> um, so I think that that feeling like if we've got to get going on this. He said, you know, you might want to consider an interim. I'm like, yeah, don't say that to this crowd. It's not popular. Um, and um, I don't think he's been doing it as long as the VSBA. On one hand, I think he's only been doing it two or three years. Um, but I think he uh, understands the job of a superintendent pretty well, and he surely came across well. And I think he does the job by working pretty closely with people, so. Okay. Shall I dial? Dial away. <clears throat> oh, let's say wait a minute. WSESU and my fellow committee members. 
Hello, Carrie, and fellow committee members. <laughs> hey, Mark. Hey. Hello. Do you guys want to introduce yourselves? Yeah. <laughs> uh, hi, Mark. It's Christina. Uh, Christina Naylor um, from the WSESD board, and I spoke with you the other day, and then passed you on to the capable hands of Carrie and Don <laughs> to do the to do the important work. Yeah. Emily. Okay. Can Emily. Can everyone hear me? Okay. Yes. Can you hear us? Yes, I can. Okay. I've got you on speaker, and uh, technology is, um, seems to be working tonight, which is a good thing. <laughs> So this is Emily Murphy Core. I don't think we've actually met before, but from the WSESD board. <coughs> and I'm Dave Scholes from the WSESD board. Good Dave Scholes, hi. Hi. Um, and then there's we have a, we, you're at a this is a public meeting, so we have about 15 <laughs> members of the public as well, so that we won't. Okay, so <laughs> They're all waving. Okay, very good. Do you want to ask for the elevators? Um, yeah, we've been starting off just asking people um, sort of for their, you know, three-minute elevator pitch. What, what would you think is most important for us to know about what you do? Well, I, I can begin by um, sharing with the, the group assembled tonight that um, I'm doing a number of different things in retirement. Uh, I retired um, as a superintendent in 2000. Um, 17. I had sent uh, my resume off to Christina, and perhaps she has shared that with some of you. Um, uh, since retiring, I've stayed active um, in the educational community um, as I wasn't quite ready to retire when I did, um, and uh, that's neither here nor there. Um, so I'm uh, a certified uh, principal mentor, and I'm uh, mentoring, and I'm actually coaching as well up in the northeastern part of the state. I've conducted um, a couple of um, superintendent searches. Um, I'm still active in the Vermont Superintendent Association. Um, and I um, stay busy with hobbies around the house, and I work at a food co-op uh, in Morrisville, and, uh, and it's all good. And I uh, have uh, several new grandchildren, and that's um, also an awesome experience that my wife and I are enjoying immensely. So, um could you outline the process, sort of, um, you know, three minutes, kind of, three to four minutes about what you have done with other districts in their search for a superintendent, SUs in their search for a superintendent? Sure. Um, has, um, Christine, have you shared the outline that I shared with you? I have, yes. Okay. So that's, you know, that's, you know, obviously it's a general outline, um, but pretty much those are the steps uh, and the components of the, of, the, uh, of the process that I have followed. Obviously, it's, it's very organic, and it's really, as I mentioned in my, my letter, um, it, I really want to follow the board of the search committee's lead in terms of what makes sense for your individual unified union at this point. Um, so, you know, we can move some of those pieces around the chessboard, and we can go deeper into some areas and, and maybe brush over others. And again, I would defer to um, the committee in terms of, you know, how to best meet your needs. Um, as I mentioned to Christina very briefly, um, you know, I really believe that the work that um, of, the, of uh, the committee is to identify a person who can best align with the mission, vision, values, and goals of the um, former supervisory union, now unified union, and not to forget the town of Vernon as well. Um, and and that's, a, that's a big conversation that I always like to have, and even though you know, typically, I haven't had typical, typically enough time with the standing board to go um, deeper into that conversation. I think that that's where I really think we need to begin. Um, my, my belief is that the superintendent, the, the leader of the, of the district, um, is really, um, you know, has to work closely in alignment with the, with the board. Um, and so having that congruence um, and making sure everyone is on the same page before we start looking for a superintendent, I think it's just tantamount to finding the right person to match up with the job. Um, so, you know, the superintendent's position uh, is important, but really I, I like to start with, you know, what does the board believe is most important based on the values and, again, in, in the beliefs in your community. Um, so I can take, yeah, you know, I'd be glad to answer any questions um, jumping off of that outline, but, um, you know, there's really nothing much more to offer um, than what I have laid out in, in that, on that one page for you. Uh, Mark, it's Carrie. I guess I'd ask, can you help us get to that vision? Well, um, I would be glad to be part of that conversation, Carrie. I, uh, I've 
been a little bit uh, not not disappointed really because I understand the timeline that boards are facing. Um, but you know, given the, the short timeline that you have in terms of finding the right person, um, you know, I think it, it, it's it's multiple meetings um, to, to just you know leading the board of the committee, whoever those folks might be, in a conversation about as trustees of the of your communities and now as a unified board, uh, starting with you, um, who best reflect, I think, you know, what the what the taxpayers and what the staff and what the students are looking for. Um, if, if we had more time, you know, as I said to other boards, um, I think it, 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 it needs more time to actually have a number of, you know, longer sessions working with um, the board, especially, um, and having that, having that richer conversation. There's also a piece, again, I'm going down the road a little bit now, um, but with a new superintendent installed, I would hope that there'd be a, an action plan to engage uh, your communities in this conversation. Um, you know, really identifying what the ends or you know, what are the outcomes that you're hoping for um, and how do we build trust you know, among all the stakeholder groups. Uh, and that's a, that is a board and superintendents um, work together. Um, and again, we can't accomplish that within a search process, but it needs to be you know, integrated into a, an action plan and going forward. And I'd be, I'd be more than happy to have those, those conversations knowing that we couldn't get into any, any, any level of detail. about the diversity question, David? Yeah. <clears throat> Mark, have you had any experience identifying, um, finding candidates of color in any of, for um, qualified candidates of color in any of the work that you've done? Or do you have any resources or, or leads to uh, get application materials in, in front of those people? Well, we, we in the, the, the search that I'm conducting now, uh, we, we went outside of school spring uh, knowing that uh, you know the Canada pool currently is not is not deep, um, and so we used a number of print media uh, and other digital platforms to put the word out there. Um, I haven't, um, to my knowledge, uh, those who have applied um, so far as a position are um, are not you know coming from that type of background. I think you have an advantage um, uh, because you are close to you know the states of, of Massachusetts and Connecticut. Um, and that might play into, you know, an objective that the board may have to try to invite um, or encourage folks of, of, of different backgrounds to apply. It's harder when you go further north um, uh, in Vermont, uh, but down in your, in your neighborhood, it might, it might be more attractive to folks in southern New England. Thanks. So I don't have any, I don't have any you know, special or <coughs> strategy per se. Um, I, all I know is having met with the executive director of the Markets carry again. Do you think that less than robust um, reply is due to our timing? Uh, due to your one carry, I'm sorry to uh, hear that. Due to the, the time of year? Oh, oh. Well, it could be. Um, I, I think there's a number of factors. Um, uh, you know, one is the, you know, how unwieldy it seems to people from away applying to a job in Vermont uh, where they have been more accustomed working with one board with one town, you know, multi-town districts are, you know, are not an anomaly by any means, but they, it's, you know, it's not always appealing to some people um, unless you really understand board governance in Vermont. Um, uh, you know, I know for some, uh, this is very anecdotal, um, this is just Mark's opinion, but I know that the transition that a number of boards have found themselves in, um, uh, sometimes not willingly to transition to a new governance structure has created some unrest in the community. Um, and that's a gross generalization. I'm not speaking about Wyndham Southeast by any means. But I, I, you know, people who are looking for these jobs, the ones who are serious are doing their homework. Um, uh, and they're, they're researching, you know, what type of activity has there been around community engagement and, and either support or not support of, of unified unions. And that too might be uh, you know, something that, um, you 
ego is a factor in people's decision. Um, you know, the superintendent is a, is a darn hard job, um, and uh, as are all the positions that are in the field serving um, kids in public school. And I just don't think we have, you know, the interest in the position as maybe we once did. There used to be a, a pool of candidates. I was one of them who aspired to be a um, superintendent starting at the building level as a building leader. And, you know, if you speak to the people in Vermont Principal Association, those aspiring leaders, you know, just are not as, as um, abundant, if you will, as, as they once were. So, I don't know if that answers your question, Karen, but I think there's a number of factors. Timing may be one of them. Um, um, you know, I, I got out pretty aggressively with the Washington Central um, ad back in early November, and um, we still have a, you know, a, a not a very strong candidate pool at this point. So, and there's only five positions. Um, um, actually, excuse me, there are eight positions currently open um, in Vermont. Wow. So we would be nine. <laughs> when you say I think you might be eight, there. we're eight. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I think I think you might be eight. It's not to worry. It, it's um, uh, it, it's just it's just the reality. And uh, you know, even even if you crank up. You know the base salary and you try to put some perks in there and that doesn't you know people take these jobs not necessarily for money but for you know the reward that it offers and, and for, it's becoming less rewarding i think all in all to, to do the work just a follow-up question when you say not a strong candidate pool are you are you mainly talking about not a strong candidate pool in vermont or is it i mean i guess that's one question and second question is is it typical that most superintendent positions get filled by somebody from Vermont? That's a good question. I, I don't know the answer to that. Um, I know that when I started practicing as a superintendent, you know, back, um, back in 2004, um, and I'd walk into an all-day meeting, it was primarily people who, who were in Vermont. Uh, but I think that that trend is changing. I, I do think that more, and again, this is that's a good question for the superintendent association, but my hunch is that there are more people from um, from down country, you know, other parts of New England and even beyond, um, um, who have applied. I mean, Yao Obang, who's just recently tendered his resignation, you know, he's a Canadian. Um, the, I can tell you that the candidate pool currently that, that we're looking at in Washington Central, just the majority of people from, are from out of state. Um, so if that's an indication, my guess is that there's, uh, there's, there's fewer people in Vermont than Olympia than there are from Hawaii. Like, and that's just one data point, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't, um, you know, guess. I wouldn't think that that's necessarily the case across the state. You know, the the you may be discussing this or, or sort of pondering this. Um, you know, the board I worked with a couple of searches ago, they were looking for someone who was fresh and new uh, and, and didn't fit necessarily sort of the mold and they're looking for transformation, not transition. Um, you know, the ethos, I think, in, in most districts is about just making another transition to yet another superintendent. And I think more and more boards are seeing, not that we don't have some outstanding superintendents in the state, um, but I think now that we've got, there's, there's a whole host of different expectations that are, many of which we don't have control of coming from state policy, that you need to have someone who can see the work through a different lens. And, and um, if you've been in Vermont your entire career, you know, sometimes you may not be able to see sort of the opportunities that others might have from coming from, coming from different states. So shall we open up to other folks' questions if they have them? Yeah, I think that sounds good. So we have, as we said, a room full of folks. So <laughs> maybe you guys have some questions. Our audience is unusually quiet. <laughs> <laughs> we should talk about artificial turf. That gets everybody, yeah. that gets everybody so it's, an opinion. It's always a little bit odd talking on the phone and it's sort of a conference call, so I understand that. <laughs> Do you have any uh, additional things that we haven't thought about um, that you think we should consider in this process? Any good advice? <laughs> well, the, the, the only, only have is advice I have, and I think it's good advice, is to just remain focused on the work, re, re, you know, remain optimistic. Uh, there are defaults that the, a board can um, can use, you know, namely an interim um, leader. If, if uh, you're not, you know, finding the right person, I would really caution 
any board not to rush into a decision if you don't have, uh, you know, full support um, and at least a consensus um, from the board that this is the person that we need at this time. It's the, you know, the, probably the one most important decision the board can make, and, and it's typically the goal is to have the person on the board for, for a number of years. Um, I think it's unlikely they're going to work 39 years um, in the district, but um, I do think, you know, trying to find someone who can work five to ten years is, is not unreasonable. Um, so be optimistic and uh, don't sell short, I think, is, would be my my advice. I have a number of questions, um, but not necessarily appropriate for this evening. You know, if, if my candidacy um, was something you wanted to continue to talk about, um, then I would, I would want to ask some other sort of qual you know, clarifying questions in terms of just what you're looking for. And, um, you know, the different stakeholder groups that you want to engage in the process. Um, but um, at this point, I, I, I don't have anything else that I think would be helpful for the group other than to say, um, you know, I'm interested in the job. Um, I, really, I find the work rewarding. Um, I think I may have mentioned to Christina that I find supporting, you know, boards in their work um, is extremely um, important. I wish we had more people who could do this work. Um, have the Association of Vermont School Boards, of course, um, and I know that at times they're probably feeling pretty lean in terms of what they can offer. Um, they've got some outstanding people that, that work there and work for them under contract, uh, but that said, um, you know, search, searches for superintendents notwithstanding, I just think there needs to be um, more people who, who are willing to work with boards um, who are truly the, the leaders of, of the district. Um, something that, um, again, if, if you thought that I might be a viable candidate, we'd want to talk more about how I can, I can approach that with you um, during this process. I, we're, all, we're all nodding here, Mark. I think it only works if it works for both parties, so um, yeah, we, yeah, would, absolutely. we would agree absolutely. with that. So. Um, yeah. so thank you, Mark. You're very welcome, and thanks for taking the time to, to assemble and give me a call. Um, uh, and uh, if you know, just, if, just I know you will. But, you know, you can either give me a call, um, please send me an email in terms of one way or the other. What you guys are thinking? Okay. We'll do Thank it. you. Thank you. Have a good night. Have a nice meeting and a good meeting, productive meeting, and uh, we'll talk soon. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Bye bye. Good night. So. That was the end of our calls, right? Mm -hmm. That's the end of calls, correct. So did you want to continue on NESDAQ? Do you want to go back to yeah. NESDAQ? Um, there's not a lot left, but it, it has a lot to relate. It's very similar to what, uh, what Mark said. Uh, whoops, wrong. Yeah. Oh, no. That now is in your email inboxes. I, I just sent it to you so you can put it in the minutes, Carrie. Oh, okay. Um, so now let me go there. So they, um, I'll start that paragraph. They started, the, um, they indicated that 120 days is typical, um, six weeks to develop uh, from getting the ad out until either closing it or starting the interviews, even if the, if the, uh, if you continue to accept applications, uh, takes, you have to allow six weeks for that. You have to expect that it's going to take that long. Um, the, uh, the number of people applying the pool diminishes uh, into the spring. It gets smaller and smaller as you get further into the spring. And then in the summer, it, it starts to grow. And again, in the fall, it grows. So more people are available and applying during those seasons. Uh, they pointed out that as much as Mark did, um, an interim might be really good, op might be the option you want to consider. The interim can help set the table for the new administration. Um, the board can think and be confident in the process and have community support and understanding, again, really um, the same points that Mark was making. And as far as candidates of color, they are um, they're in primarily in Massachusetts and Connecticut, although there are a lot of other states as well. And uh, they're finding that that, that that is becoming one more, comp the, the quote is, becoming one more component in their search, uh, in their list of components for the searches that they do. Uh, they recommend being candid about the time frame, uh, that, that um, the search needs a solid community visioning process, and um, 
I think the last thing is we asked really explicitly, can you know, do you do a la carte? And they said, yes, there are a range of services. And if you look at the their um, their list of services, there it's um, there is part that we could use them for, and parts that we might use other people for. What did they say for pricing, or did they not? Um, so the pricing is 20, in 000. the search outreach, which is what he said could be a very good option for us, mm -hmm. which is just where they will do the ad placement. Um, and it was AASA, top school jobs, school spring, um, and their proprietary network, which David did try to rent, but they said no, but nice try. Um, <laughs> But I think they, well, he didn't, he didn't really say that that wasn't included in the Oh, no, it's outreach. included. Yeah. It, it, right. It's included in the right. outreach, but we were trying to basically get it from right. them. Right. But they, <laughs> um, so the search outreach is 3500 to 5500 and that does include any ad costs, although he did say they don't use as much print media as they used to. Most of it is electronic. Um, I'm trying to think if I've got anything else. Um, he he was very honest with us and said your timetable is doable, but you're pushing it. He's got um, clients he started working with in October, and they're ending in late February. So that was the 120 days. Um, he said the biggest mistake people make is rushing too quickly. He also, it's very interesting that I thought, he, he said the same thing that Mark just said about there is a difficulty in attracting um, candidates to Vermont given our multi-town districts, multi-boards. Um, So this 3,500 to 5,500 mm -hmm. search outreach, yeah. this is not, we'd still, that would just be in addition, we'd still have to hire somebody. We'd have to hire someone to do the visioning okay. um, and probably if we want to make tweaks to the job description, um, so we would need that work done. But you know, he did say the most economical way to engage them might be to do the search outreach just because they do have a national database um, that is proprietary. Um, and so I think that was the 300, do you remember what that was? 35 to 5? No, um, the, who the... Oh, the who, number of who the, No, the, the, who the proprietary people were. I think it was. Um, They've oh affiliate affiliate districts within New England. Mm -hmm. Three hundred affiliate districts. Three hundred affiliate districts within. And um, and also the um, he mentioned a, a number of I don't think he said how many colleges <gasps> they yes. have a relationship yes, they with. Yes, they have relationships with. Yeah. Okay. And I don't know if he thought that if that might somebody coming out of a graduate program or if it might people in colleges that might want to become superintendents. I'm not sure exactly what he meant by mm -hmm. that. But. No. That would be a little weird for a superintendent search to get somebody. Yeah, unless the college, you know, they're retired superintendents or superintendents that um, became professors or, yeah. you know, or, I have no idea yeah. what, you know, what the scope might be. I mean, it did just sound as if they are very in touch with the educational community nationwide. Yeah, they really... Um, <laughs> He had they a good clearly, network. Well, I mean, there, Andy, a, Andy made this uh, referral to us, and it was a really good call. They're yeah. they're really the the uh, very competent but, um, yeah. and and knowledgeable about all of this thing. Mm -hmm. And and as you said, Christine, you don't really like not really happy to hear the the recommendation about waiting and doing it, uh, taking our time and doing it right. But they were really really clear about that. Mm -hmm. That's been a really a consistent yeah. message. That yeah, I think doing. every the three people yeah. we've talked to that have said to this have said all said that. We hate to tell you this, yeah. but. <laughs> um, and then, so the search would just be looking for the candidates, that 3,500? The, the search outreach included them advertising, collecting all of the um, resumes that come back, and getting them to us. Getting, yeah. 
we didn't ask him about reference checks. Um, I think they, but I can't. Yeah. I can't remember if he said they. I don't remember asking that question, and I'm sorry for that. And so, it, do they have a next level service plan up on their dim sum menu that allows that they'll kind of help manage focus groups and you know um, interview groups <coughs> and manage candidates and do all that? Because I don't see this board at this. I like to save some money, but I think this board can't do this right now. Um, so they've got a guided search, which includes telephone and electronic access um, to an assigned search consultant. They have a comprehensive search, which includes all of, uh, uh, so sorry, the guided search is 6,500 to 8,500. And that includes the other things? The other things. Okay. Um, the comprehensive search is the broader scope of services typically requested by most of our clients. Um, so I think that is the full visioning. Um, that is 12,000 to 20,000, and that is where they like to design it around your particular community. Okay. Um, let's see. Did you get a feel on the ranges? Like we're a fairly small district compared to many districts in Massachusetts. If they're working mainly in Massachusetts and Connecticut, are we falling maybe at the lower end or no feeling about that? Yeah, it's also mm -hmm. No feeling. Yeah. Okay. Excuse me. Oh. Um, I, I can answer some of that. Um, and the answer is they've done both. And you can go to the website and you can, they have a listing of um, searches that they've conducted. And um, they run from small communities, student population probably similar to ours, to urban areas where, you know, many more students. So they, they do both. Yeah. Um, and also just, if I got to add just one other commentary, um, that um, uh, 12 to 20,000 sounds like a lot of money, but again, you're hiring the CEO of a $60 million operation with 700 employees, over 2,000 children. Um, it's money well spent it's, to help us get it's the right. It's very much in the ballpark. Yeah. yeah. It's not yeah. unusual yeah. at all. Yeah. And the Alan Carr makes them actually really yeah. much more affordable. Yeah. So do we want to, what do we want to do? We want to talk to the whole board about these options because it's we're kind of at the point of having to make some decisions and I don't, do we want to bring a record talk now and bring a recommendation or go have dinner and, <laughs> and there's snacks the in the corner board. David yeah. um, maybe we could attack it a little bit like uh, principal search is attacked where we just sort of debrief and talk about the positives of the candidates mm -hmm. um, and I I think with Thrive, and it's a little bit, we did them before, it would be good to bring them back up on the table and, and it's too bad Jen had to go to, we couldn't get Jen Jacobs in case that we had follow-up questions, but to just um, talk about the positives that each group can provide, because it may also be that we do some hybrid system. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. well, and do we, we want to do that? We'll have to do it again with the full board. I'm we'll have to do it again with the full board, but at least we can. Okay. sort of maybe come to a place where we have her. I'm, I'm not, I'm throwing this out there as a concept that we can at least start the process because maybe as we talk something, or if somebody feels they have a strong feeling and they want to recommend a candidate and make a motion, go for it, as far as I'm concerned. I, mean, no. I, think, I okay. think it makes sense to talk now. Um, I mean, I'm not on the full board, so that would be nice just to chat with you guys about it. <laughs> yeah. um, but additionally, since they didn't actually hear from them and weren't allowed or weren't able to ask questions, it would probably make sense to come with some type of feeling from us, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, that's I what I would expect. So. Okay. Okay. And because a lot of these bodies are the same bodies? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so do so um, we want to just go top to bottom? You're saying to talk about positives and then first? Yeah. Is that yeah. What yeah. That's a good. Okay. And just to refresh everybody's memory yes. on yeah. sort of what people are bringing to the table. Okay, so shall we start with the ones we heard today then? Yeah. Since they're fresh. Yeah. That's good. Um, okay. So first was VSBA. Well, they've worked with us before. I guess recent work with us. Uh, 
Um, I guess for Mark, I would say I liked his being a former superintendent. There was something nice about that. <laughs> felt comfortable talking to him. I thought he was clearly an educational leader. Um. Yeah, I think I liked, I mean, he just seemed pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. I mean, he did suggest the interim, but also just said what the timelines could do and what he felt was really important, which I liked that he felt the visioning process was really important um, because I didn't necessarily hear the same emphasis on that in other folks. Yeah, he also, the point he made about um, having a plan to get, engage the community in the search, but then also in the implement, in the, um, mm. the early early period of the new, the new tenure to um, continue to be engaged with the community so people can see what's happening with the change. I think he really came across as a Vermonter and got that community input um, importance that I think is a real Vermont quality, so. I would say a positive for the VSBA is they, they do a fair number of these, so they aren't you know, specifically superintendent searches. seem for VSBA and Mark Andrews they have time I mean it's not VSBA said they were just had one that was on their plate I guess and Mark seemed to have the time to also kind of personalize the process I mean I'm impressed that it, yeah I'm impressed his proposal includes coming down one day a week mm -hmm. Does the community also want to say positives? We could do NASDAQ too. Oh, NASDAQ, NASDAQ too, yeah. okay. Yeah. I just say wow. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, they're very competent. They don't um, know the area, and I think the visioning part would be um, kind of generic for them as opposed to really customized to the, to the community. Um, Again, a lot of experience. You know, they really um, the, the, just was the, the. He just felt confident in the information that they were, the, the information that he was giving us. And the wide range search, they mm -hmm. seem to. The connections. The connections yeah. that they have. And the fact that they're flexible about making those available if you don't want everything mm -hmm. else. Mm -hmm. I think for them too, we might be more likely, it seems like, than VSBA and Mark Andrews to get maybe a candidate of color if that's something that's important to us. Do we want to go back and do the other? Yeah. Jen Jacobs, thrive. thrive. Yes, not just Jen Jacobs. Love that they're local. Yeah. Yeah. The um, and a track record, a local track record. Yeah. Yeah, and um, successful in getting a broad pool of applicants, which at least for the the town, the, the Brattleboro Town Schools was really important. Um, obviously, well, not obviously. I don't think it's necessarily less important, but it's less pressing, I think, for the other towns. Um, I think the, the um, survey ability, the research ability, you know, the electronic communications ability, the familiarity with the community is really helpful in the visioning process. And um, the relationship with the uh, Vermont Alliance 
but also help making sure that the materials um, we developed in the search and outreach process would be inclusive and uh, wouldn't be turning people away, but would actually be appealing. So maybe it's my misunderstanding, but I felt like um, that relationship would be if we got both of them together is how that would work, or no? I, I don't know. I would think that's to be determined. But that, that relationship, I... Yeah, I... Maybe you can oh, answer Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, yeah, I was going to say if there was anything... Can you introduce yourself? Cause yeah, um, I'm Alyssa sorry. Pilo. I'm an HR consultant for Thrive, um, so I work for Jennifer. Right. Right. Um, and, yeah, that that is the understanding is we would, um, yeah, sort of assist and join forces okay. with the consultant that's chosen. But I was on the phone, so I couldn't hear everything. So, so Curtis is only, it, it, it's not for the whole process. I did not think it was the whole process. Okay. What? Curtis, Curtis was not proposing the whole process. He was proposing um, support with language and yeah, uh, and outreach protocols yeah. and uh, candidates outreach. for outreach too. Okay. Yeah, Look, looking for different ways to do outreach, but and working with committees on implicit bias to make sure that and working on our description. But he was also, ads. he did talk about an evaluation matrix. Oh, um, that's right, yeah, yeah. Um, and participate in the triage and interviewing of candidates. Um, reviewing the job description. Um, assist in the development of written and oral interview questions. An evaluation screening matrix. So it seems like he's, I just didn't think it was going to be the running the interviews and um, okay. That's okay. what I didn't. I don't you, think that was what he was proposing. The piece of managing all the stuff. Okay. I didn't mean. Okay. Did I miss that? No, no, no. Yeah, I don't think right. so. I don't think so. So he's a support. He's playing a supportive role, but not a management role. Right. He's like an upgrade. Of, you know. Yeah. Okay. Would that be the best way to characterize how it worked with the town, to your knowledge? I think so. Yeah. 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 I I wasn't involved with yeah. that particularly, but it does okay. sound like that. Jennifer would coordinate the interview process. Okay. And and her and Curtis collaborated through that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So he has the same track record with the town then. Right. And he's local. Yep. So okay. So track record with the town. One of the uh, points that um, Jennifer made in a, a response after the, the first meeting, um, when they did, didn't do a formal 20-minute presentation like the ones we've been doing here, but um, you know, just kind of talked sort of informally, is that um, as we can, as we evaluate what different consultants offer, want to consider what the consultant will do versus what the members of the search committee will need to do and then what the consultant will not do. And um, just they provide guidance for strategy and execute each portion of it while remaining closely aligned with the goals and vision. So a partner rather than an advisor coming in. Mm -hmm. I like how you said guidance and execution. Yeah. Because that, that's Thrive. Yes. Do we have an idea? Guidance for strategy and execute each portion. Sorry. Okay. Well, it's nice to have so many options that seem viable. I know. I want to take a little from everyone. Uh, yeah, I have that same. <laughs> I ask a question. Sure. Do we know Chris 
Francis B. Did anyone ever? 14,000. 14,000. But he also has an hourly um, consulting fee if it's not, you know, if you're not asking for, for not the whole thing. A, the whole the thing. Full thing yeah. yeah. I, mean, it kind of, I, I kind of want to throw that out there, building on what Carrie said, is maybe we can um, get the both best of some of these candidates and pick and choose. I mean, we know NASDAQ is very open to give us your job description and we will blast it out and handle parts of it. Mm -hmm. um, and that seems, I like that as their strength. Mm -hmm. um, but whereas I think one of the things we have to offer here in Brattleboro is we have a thriving, I mean, I'm not from here. We drove around Vermont. We could put our business anywhere in Vermont and we moved here. And so that's 20 years ago, but I think it still applies. This is an interesting place to live and um, it provides an alternative to places like Boston and New York, and there's still a lot going on here. So I think, um, I think it, working with somebody who's Massachusetts-based for the whole process, I'm not sure they're going to get, that. get yeah. that other part. That's, mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. what I'm concerned they wouldn't be able to provide. Actually, I actually I worried a little bit about that when he was talking, because um, he was very aware that um, the, the Relation, they do have a couple of people on board from Vermont and, and sort of know the dynamics, and very aware that most of the people come from Vermont or New York or northern Massachusetts or maybe New Hampshire, pretty much along the you know along that line, that corridor, and um, he sort of had it in his mind that that's that's the reality, so that's what's going to happen. My concern was that that's how what they see and that's their experience, and they're going to that's so they will look at it, it that way rather than the sort of much broader search that we're, that we're looking hoping for. to engage in. I mean, they would do, if we said no, we want to broad, they would do that, I'm sure. But right. I just wonder about how well they, well they would be able to articulate what, why somebody would want to come here, why they should want to come here. I think, too, it would be pretty hard to do some, I mean, the visioning is not included in it, but mm -hmm. it would be hard to do a lot of community engagement via phone. And focus mm -hmm. groups yeah. and stuff like so, that. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. we are pretty, we want to support the community in kind of creating a vision for the position and being involved in the process, so I think, I don't know that we could go forward with NESDEC if we wanted that. We could go forward with an a la carte, but we couldn't go forward with them for the whole process. That's $6,500, the comprehensive. Yeah. It, and, uh, but it, it was very clearly a, includes telephone and electronic access yeah. to an assigned search consultant. That seems a little That's, bit hands off compared right. to what our community would probably like. Right. Yeah, I had the same, like, I was like, oh. It hmm. seems very interesting. Even though we did all this over the phone, but but um, it was, but yeah. Oh, it doesn't mean we can't we can't have them. Maybe for the national, they can yeah. put our stuff out for thirty five hundred if we want to. Right, if we want to use their network, yeah, to really get a wide scope. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it sounds like we're thinking about it, an a la carte approach with. Um, Using the local local resources to do the sort the initial visioning and developing materials and, and a lot of the outreach as well in the in the, the search and then also engaging the the the, um, the larger group for to expand it even further and and probably I don't know what else they offer but he was he was a helpful person you know they they definitely are in the in the business as well I think if we were even if we only engaged them for thirty five hundred I think it would, you know it would be worthwhile. The thing, the question we haven't asked, or haven't talked about yet, is: um, Do we wait? Do we look for an option, an alternative for the next year, so that we can do this properly? Because, well, that was, I mean, properly right, and you don't want to make a mistake on a decision as big as this. Were the kinds of things that we, that we've heard through this whole process, and I can't help but, and then the 120 days, and I mean, if we just took the six weeks for or the. Yeah, the six weeks for collecting and getting all the applications in, and then the two weeks of interviews, that's, that's two months. And we would be starting that in, at best in early, early January. So we'd already be to March. And um, 
it may be that there's somebody out there just waiting for the the sell, you know, the materials and, and the, the offer that we're, we're looking to make. But the other um, point, and this was from the NESDAQ uh, as well, is um, most superintendents have in their contract a 90 or 90 or 100 and some number of days um, notice clause. Right. So that if somebody wanted to take the job in March, they, you know, they might not be able to start until well into the year, if we, you know, if we would. The other thing that he said about the pool growing in the spring and the summer um, really got me feeling, I was right where you were, Christina, right up until I talked to him. And he just, he just the, the need to get it right really kind of stuck out. I'm the one that said interim first and I nearly was crucified so for that. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I think well, we you had trouble getting it out. Yeah, well, no, <laughs> you know, I just, I, I wanted to be optimistic, but yeah. I have to admit, every single person has warned us and yeah. said, you need to do this right. It will take time. It's late. Yeah. I guess I want to, I, I think we have things to offer here that other places in Vermont don't. I think we have a community to yeah. offer. We have interesting challenges to offer for an educational leader looking for those. We have a lot of cool things happening we have a lot of throughout really, our district. A lot of progressive things going on in the schools. Exactly. Yeah. So we're not. An incredible staff yeah, and so administration. I think we do have a lot of things to offer so that maybe we could, you know, and so maybe that person's out there that when they saw this job might say, yeah, I want to do this. I don't think we should close our minds to the option. You know, I think that I'm a realistic optimist at, at heart, and I think we need to think that maybe it will be an interim, but I'd like us to go full bore go full for two months and, see what, and see what we can get. Mm -hmm. If we went full board, you're nodding on that one too. Yeah, I'm yeah. nodding on yeah. that if we, one. Yeah. If we went full in um, during this process, and then we actually chose an interim. I guess I don't know a lot about the process. Meaning, like, we interview people and then we kind of like somebody, so we give them an interim position. Or like, how does someone get elected an interim, and then will all of this just set the groundwork for what we end up launching in the summer if we have an interim? Is that how we think about it? I think what Christina was saying was what I was nodding my head to was we'll try through the we'll go with jump in the process, mm -hmm. um, see what we can get in two months, see if we find somebody we want to hire. If we don't, then obviously we'll extend it and um, try to find somebody to fill in for the um, or some other option to get through the next year. So there's no harm really from what I'm hearing then in going full in now because you're just extending it like well the, let me play devil's advocate is there though with what nesdex said that the pool is starting to shrink and it's not going to open up again until summer fall do we not do we not go full in on the advertising of the position, but we go full in on the visioning and, and making preparing materials and preparing and, yeah. so that we can go all in, you know, whatever this dip is in the thing. Once we know the, the pool is growing, is that when we say, okay, we got it? I don't, I, I'm torn because there could be somebody out there ready to say, hey, I want that job. And I don't want to lose them, but I want that wide pool. Would that person you think apply for an interim? If they really wanted to be here, wouldn't and then they can apply for the full? Or does that not happen? I don't know how that works. I mean, that's such a. I mean, the other thing I feel like is we've been through a lot this year, and so to go through two leadership. Ch I mean, I remember when somebody asked me at the candidates' night. Yeah. We have a strong administration. We have a strong community. We have strong mm -hmm. staff. And in a couple of years, the board will be strong too, and it's just going to take us a while to find our way. And so I think I, I, I don't want to miss the opportunity to try to attract, and I think we'll know early on if it's even a possibility. Yeah, if we're not getting okay. applications, and then we, we won't be having course. people processing them. Yeah. And we'll have learned from that. Yeah. And, and we'll have all the materials and we'll have the vision stuff in place. And we should not hire somebody that's not. For a full for a full on position, right? It is not. Right. We're not sure about it. So, so do we know when that time is that we have to say switch course? <laughs> I think after 
called yeah. first round of okay. Yeah, the, the, okay. the first applicant that first six week period of getting applications. Okay. So just to just a question on the timelines then. So the one hundred and twenty day timeline from Na that NASDA gave and a lot of folks suggested mm -hmm. that same one three that they months, were like yeah. three months. That doesn't include three vision four. though. Or four three to four months. Right. Uh, it does. Oh it does. Yes. It does. It includes okay. everything. Yeah. Okay. But he also did warn us, December's gone. Yeah, I mean, that's is, yeah. part of the reality. <laughs> I'm around. <laughs> I think we have a meeting scheduled next week. What, what's this? <laughs> if I see yeah. you all on Christmas, I am so <laughs> just... No, you can have Christmas off. Let's go caroling at Carrie's house. <laughs> we'll, we'll sting some... <laughs> a bunch of big nags. Um, Crash on the couch. So, what's our dream scenario? Like, well, like what, what would we do if money were not an object, time were not an object? I mean, I think what would we tap for what? Well, if money, so here's what here was here's, <laughs> here would be my like dream scenario is, yeah. is Nesdaq does that initial. So we we work with someone to come up with our vision, and and craft our job description, and that's in January, in Jan in early January. And it's interesting because I think a lot of people offer a lot of stuff. I think Mark offers a real understanding of the job and has done this search. And he just sounds like he understands board dynamics and he's used to working with school boards. Mm -hmm. um, Jen understands our local community and Curtis can bring in the piece that I think we really would be worth investing in in trying to assure that we're packaging our community in a way that can attract a diverse candidate pool. How could we make that work? And then NASDAQ does the NASDAQ does the um, search so piece of it, and then somebody, and I don't know who, it would probably make sense to have it be more local, does the, the guiding through the management. Is that Jen? Yeah. Well, I think, too, the... Um Curtis has a, a and Curtis and I think um, Thrive also have a pretty strong list of um, organizations and, and um, contacts that um, we would want to also have outreach to, you know, mm -hmm. getting materials to. I'm a little bit worried about. I, I agree with what you said about Mark understanding the circumstances and, and the and the job, but I'm not sure how available he would be in that compressed period of time when we're going to want to be doing that. And then as far as um, surveys or focus focus groups, um, you know, I don't know that he's available to do any of that. And we would want to at least try to have at least one or two of those. I think he was, I mean, on his thing, which I don't think we're looking at his whole... I've got it if anyone wants to. Yeah, I didn't see that. The whole gig. I've left my. I've got the proposal. I didn't get his back and that's the letter. So he was going to come one day a week to work with us every week. So I think he would be. His plan was to be here um, to do a lot of that work. So I, mm -hmm. I don't. When I first talked to him, he was iffy about the availability, and I, you know. And then he called back and said, yes, he would, because of the distance. But then he thought about it. And yeah, the collaboratively with the board um, to identify the responsibilities and priorities and essential qualifications, um, he would be really good for that. So it All seems right. like we're thinking of just, I'm summarizing now mm -hmm. where we're at. So vision and we need vision and job description. Yeah. Which it sounds like from the names that were mentioned were Thrive or Mark is what we're thinking. Or maybe Thrive and. Thrive, uh, yeah, Thrive and or Mark. Mm -hmm. Management throughout the process. I wasn't, I didn't, I put Thrive because it seemed like you mentioned Jen. Mm -hmm. And maybe, maybe it's and or Mark, I don't know. Because um, I'm not sure exactly where his name fell in. And then a la carte. Maybe Nesdaq, like for the outreach, the outreach and Curtis Street. Yeah. For mm -hmm. I mean, I'm calling him Alakar only because he wouldn't be managing the process. Right. So he would be an ad, an additional support for us in a specific direction. 
So Thrive is management, Curtis is additional support, we advertise through NASDAQ, and that seems like Mark had a little role in here. If Do we, we have yeah. too many cooks in the kitchen? Well, that's my concern. It depends, <laughs> on what, it depends on their response if we make a proposal along those lines. I, in my you know, it depends on how proprietary they feel. Do it's you? vision, oh. oh, sorry. Vision and job description, do, it would be, do you think it's smart for the same person to do management and vision and job description? I mean, it seems like it would be more seamless if you had one person versus, I mean, I do think Mark seemed really invested in that, only because he was the one who specifically spoke about visioning. But if, if we did not go with him for management, it might be a little. It seems clunky. Like yeah, here, because you're with us for so long, that, and then you got to like, hand it over to somebody else. Yeah, I, I worry about the Passover. Yeah, just of those yeah. two. Although I also could see them as sort of discrete, getting everything boiled down and clarified from somebody who's done the job, and then you have you have a package that you're marketing then and managing. And I think that's something that I feel we really need help with. And so who's going to be the best person to help us with that visioning process? I didn't get the sense that the SBA. Have you looked at, have you seen this, Mark's? Um, yeah, I have it here, okay. yeah, yeah. So I, got, I, I feel like he would be the best one at doing that. I don't think the VSBA was going to, they didn't, but we weren't talking to the key person. We were talking, talking to Susan Holson, which is unfortunate. Yeah. She's the but, one that does it. But. Um, like, I don't think the question was even really like, oh, visioning, missioning, you know, we, we're mm -hmm. trying to vision what we want for our educational leader, and I don't think that was... No, they... She said that was strategic planning, so I think she wasn't getting the connection. I know, I tried to, I tried to reiterate the question, you know, rephrase the mm -hmm. question, so I, I'm not sure if it was just the phone connection, the not the right person, but I, mm -hmm. I just walked out feeling like this key piece that I'm concerned about is I thought he would be the best one to do that. Not NASDAQ, because they're not even gonna come here. Mm -hmm. And um, Thrive probably would be pretty good at that, but also some people who've done superintendent searches before have been through the process before, so, you know. And people who've done the job kind of know the issues. Sorry. I think for the um, BSBA and Mark both, they really have not done anything really outside of Vermont. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, he offered some ideas, um, but really no experience with that or no sense. Well, except that he said most of his the Washington Central candidates all came from We're from my state, yeah. From state, I was thinking more so. in terms of um, candidates of color. Well, yeah, I think that's another, I don't, I think probably Curtis is going to be the best at doing that, maybe NASDAQ. So. Did you have a comment? Yeah, I just would love to put from the educator side, lay an element of importance on having somebody in that place of the visioning management um, that really knows education I think is going to be vital to know which stakeholders should be part of which conversations and which questions to drive those that whole process I think Mark really presents that and I, I do have a concern as much as I think Thrive sounds like an amazing organization not knowing the educational field um, would make me concerned for that role. I think balancing that and Mark not knowing the promotional and outreach and, and presenting things, sort of the professional part of, of finding candidates, is that's what we need to balance. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that finding a, somebody to do a wide search by all means, but I think the, the visioning and the local work Ideally, it would be somebody that has educational knowledge. I can contribute to that a, a yeah. little bit. I, I did work for WCSU and Human Resources previously before going to Thrive, so I at least can contribute some of some of that background. Doing some searches and um, hiring for WCSU and sort of using that for this. I guess, I mean, one nice thing too is if we did go with Thrive for the management process, they're right here. So, like, I mean, management is the part where it's like a lot of random things happen, you have to meet, and so Mark Somebody's is kind of far. Keep it on track. Yeah. yeah. 
and right. we have a short timeline, so it's a little like it would be hard if we needed him more one week and you know he wasn't available. But maybe like Christina said, if we went with Mark for the vision and job description, or what she, you know, one suggestion she gave, I guess if we wanted, we just have to make it seamless because we do have such a short timeline that mm -hmm. like it, there has to be very descript, like this is the deadline and here are all the processes that lead up to it and needs to be a kind of, he would need, if he was the first one, the vision and job description, he would need to really get moving soon. Which I think he's expecting anyways, but yeah. it would just be understanding if he could really do that. Um, do we, okay, why are we tweaking the job description with Mark? Not that, well, that. It's not that, I think it's the. Um, the vision of what we're, because the job description for, yeah. is more the nuts and bolts of the evaluation, and it was really created, that job description was mm -hmm. created because there wasn't one and we had to right. evaluate. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. we He's were creating that. It's got two things too. Qualifications, experiences. So I guess uh, what I'm getting at is there any reason not to take that job description? Mm. I know Curtis had some issues with it, yeah. which maybe we could deal with. Yeah. Is there any reason not to take that job description and get it out mm -hmm. now and then get the visioning going early January? Where do they connect? Where do they cross? I think there needs to be something, because that's a really nuts and bolts job description, mm -hmm. and I think there needs to be something that really clearly defines, I think, like a half, a half page mm -hmm. of what we are looking for and what okay. we are offering. Where we want to okay. go. Okay. And where we want to go. Yeah, what are so we're missing our elevator pitch. Of, our elevator pitch. Yeah. Not okay. the not the you two have years this of this, and three this, years and you, of this. You, it's the, you've evaluated principles and okay. that okay. That's what our current job that's, description is versus what are the 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 really good stuff, you know, yeah. that the, the stuff it, that will catch your eye and say, I want to go there. Washington Central had a great elevator pitch. Did you read that, David? No. I feel like I've got it somewhere. We want to. Oh, well, I know. I mean, <laughs> I don't think it really applied to us. Um, there we go. You have it? Scott Thompson wrote that. It was. I don't, I, I don't think it's it the our single board single budget district contains blah blah blah. Historically, our townspeople strongly support both their own schools and public education in general. That okay. Yeah. Our current board has ten members, which will increase to fifteen. Our student population shows little racial or ethnic diversity, but it spans significant differences among the axes of income and socioeconomic status. Natural population growth is stagnant. All right. Oh, a successful candidate must have. No, okay, now it gets into. There's a line in there, like we're oh, looking for a. This is, okay, our there, ideal there candidate go. is well rounded and able to respond constructively to the demands of any given situation. Oh, least, yeah. By disposition, she or he will naturally tend to be more educator than administrator, more democrat than bureaucrat more questioning than knowing, more inclined to experiment than to play it safe, willing to delegate decision-making to capable subordinates, able to balance the needs and aspirations of the people with state-mandated requirements. Can't we just be inspired by this? Yeah. <laughs> well, they were, that's, who, that's who Mark helped. Right? That's who Mark this helped. This is who Mark helped. Yes. <laughs> they have a really good writer on their on their board too. I will say so. Um, okay. Scott, yeah. Scott Thompson yeah. wrote that. Yeah. But wow. And I, I'm not sure that. It, but I loved that. And I that okay. I think is the thing that we need. To we come. need. That's what I think we need. Because ours is like four pages long right now, right? Right. And, it's, and, and there's no life in it. It's just, yeah. I, yeah. Because it was created. It was created for a different yeah. purpose. For a tool. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little, and it's really helpful for the for when we're interviewing a superintendent to say, wait a minute, these are some of the responsibilities that need to get done, and and how are we checking off. And it's so, not, so we need someone to take this and turn it into this. Yeah, knowing us. infuse it with some spirit. Yeah. And yeah, that is who Mark like that's that was their ad, and they worked with Mark to come up with that. So that's. 
maybe also where I get the idea that he might be really good for this. So. Yeah. No, I know that I didn't realize he wrote this or was. Hmm. Another hand in the audience. <laughs> uh, one more, uh, so two things. One, I wonder if that outcome is part of the visioning process, perhaps, rather than separate. Um, and also, I wonder about the visioning and the management split. And I thought perhaps, but maybe you could speak to that. It seems like it might be important that the person doing the management is very involved in the visioning process as well. That they might be very intertwined. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I think in the whole holistic process, that would be crucial. A collaboration from the beginning. Yes. Oh, I'm just going to reiterate something that was brought up at the last meeting. Um, I, there's, a, there's been a lot of great proposals. I think everybody's been very clear. It's nice to hear what everybody has to offer. Um, there is, NESDEC does offer everything I feel like that you would need and they've done it, like this is what they do. So just, you have something there that can do the job you're looking for, I think. And so to consider that, you know, rather than having to find all of these people and split up the, the resources, does it make sense to go with a, a package that exists? That's a decision that would have to be made. But, you know, I, I was at the meeting last night and it came up with the contract, uh, with the turf field, of course. And if you're, if you're working with somebody, you can ask them for what you need, right? Like you could ask, can we meet once a month or once a week or whatever? You know, I don't, I don't think that should be off the table because it's not listed in their proposal. I would just, something to consider. Um, it's, it's, a pa it's a company that does this and they've done it well for 70 years. Um, it's worth considering. Do they, did you talk with them about the possibility of meeting in person? Do they have people that will travel here? Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. I think it would. It, it's we, we a much longer they, process if they're gonna if we're gonna engage them in no. the whole, for the whole thing. I mean, that was pretty much. Well. It's, he he did say they haven't done a lot of remote work, but I thought he also said, but we've gotten a couple calls lately. Yeah. I feel like other people are looking at them as well. <laughs> so this is not. They're, they. They're in New Hampshire. They're doing some searches currently in New Hampshire. If you just click on their um, link, so you know it's not just Southern New England. Yeah. That they're no, they've, they've done. I mean, they've done hundreds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Their most recent were Granbury, uh, Granby, Connecticut, Hingham, Mass, um, Norwich, Connecticut, Putnam, Randolph, Mass. We almost have too many good people. Is it, per Sorry. <laughs> Is it appropriate to like seek people out that have worked with these organizations and, and ask about their experiences? As far as if like a con if there's a concern about level of support or you know physical hand people being there, could you reach out to a district that you've been in? Gain that perspective. I think the 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 thing about NASDAQ, they are very thorough and very complete, and it's a whole package, and that has its advantages. It's, it's I think um, having local people involved, deeply involved in the visioning process is, is really important, and that we've heard that from everybody and, and from them as well. Um, but they were, they were the ones that were most clear about the amount of time it takes to actually do that, and I think we, we just don't have that that time. The other thing is that they are away. A lot of it they would want to do electronically and on the phone including surveys and things too, which they can do. They have the, the capacity to do that. They do come and do focus groups. Um, that was one of the things he emphasized, mm -hmm. but um, I'm not sure how that gets, gets set up or what, you know, how they would know who to meet with or what does it say? Oh, they were the first it, ones to use authentic, authentic focus, focus groups. groups yeah. yeah. To do needs as community um, needs assessments. Yeah. 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 I mean, they, they do seem full service. They do seem that they will do 
Well, and I think we also have an hourly rate from Thrive. Mm -hmm. Actually, from everybody. From it, right. I mean, that's the question is how to make it. How do we put a proposal seamless. together to them? Right, yeah. right. So that they will say, "Yeah, we can do that," or "No, and you've got too many irons work. in the yeah, fire. This it's is not, not going to work. work." Don't do it. Yeah. Good question. I mean, I do think that if we were to go with Nasdaq, at least it's all managed by one person, mm -hmm. or one. I guess it's one group. Um, and they would probably assign us, I would think if they're such a big organization working across Massachusetts and Granby, Connecticut is in Western Connecticut, I would think that they would be assigning us somebody who's out here. Or that could be something we requested. Mm -hmm. Because then the commute time would definitely would be, you know, they'd be able to come more maybe. Right, like, mm -hmm. it's a little I concerning. I think they're all in, in Marlboro. I don't, I don't know that. They, oh. they have they're, affiliated they're districts. Yeah, their headquarters are in Marlboro. Right. They have affiliated districts. I don't know if they have affiliated people. We'd have to find yeah. out. Yeah. What were you going to say? Um, so, I just want, I think one of the things that we have to offer is we're different here than Hingham, than Granby, than Putnam, and we're going to have to find a way to get this larger organization to sell our funky little town and all the cool things we're doing at our schools. Yep. And so that's the challenge. Like, Marlboro Mass, this is my, this is my zone of the world, kind of. And so can they, um, can they differentiate us? Can they different in, differentiate instruction for this group versus what they're used to offering? I mean, I think they, they would do a comprehensive job, but can we get that local flavor, that um, the terroir of Brattleboro area schools? Do you think that every school goes in thinking that they're different, though? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes. I say, no, it's just us. No, I think our community is definitely <laughs> different. <laughs> the one and only Brattleboro. Well, I mean, no, we are different from other districts, but I'm just wondering, like, I'm sure there are, out of 300 districts they're working with, there are probably a few special cases. So I think when you think of going to teach in Vermont, you don't kind of think of this. Yeah. This is not what a lot of Vermont looks like particularly, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I'm from the Boston area. You could pretty much walk into any of those schools, and they're very similar. Yeah. And the communities are very similar. I don't think people there's slight nuanced differences, mm -hmm. but I don't think everybody thinks they're better. Yeah. But the re the reason I asked you is because so Amherst Pelham Regional School is a, is, is actually a school district really similar to ours because mm -hmm. I grew up there, so I know. Um, but it's like you know Leverett. It has a bunch of surrounding towns, yeah. and it's a pretty diverse place. I grew up in the town south of it, didn't go to that school, but I don't know. I guess I just wonder, like, if they're working with them, and I think it's a, actually a really well-functioning school district. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I guess I just wonder if they've, how that search is going, because it is only about 45 minutes away from us. That would be a good reference. Yeah, if we did want to check into somebody, because they're... I don't. I haven't looked up their demographics recently, but I would say that they're they're really artsy place. So. And that's the one that caught my eye too. Was like, oh, they're working here. You know, yeah. They think Amherst. I'm like, oh, that's here. That's yeah. Right. And it's a college town, <laughs> yeah. and it's progressive. And Four hundred students. Anybody know anybody on the board at Amherst Pelham Regional Public Schools? <laughs> Peter, are these all superintendents, though? This one is, but I don't think actually Amherst is a principal. Um, yeah, they do executive yeah. searches, oh, so. Okay. Oh, this is executive. It does not mean executive, the whole organization. Right. Yeah. Oh, where, where do I go yeah, for they that? Have they have superintendents listed. Right. Well, I've got the recent, well, even some of these are, or one of these is an executive. I thought executive director. was the executive. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Executive openings, that would still be. Principals? Principals, yeah. Yeah. I can't see any of the other ones then, I guess. Hmm, interesting. So you just scroll through them? Is that the only way you can? 
Well, only here was only like very few. Oh. Uh, In addition, I'm only seeing principles. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Anyways. My second half cousin-in-law was not in the board public school, <laughs> so I can call her. They just okay. finished the superintendent, so she used to be a chair of the board. So I guess where are we at? Like, what's the temp drinks now? I'm like, I liked both options for different reasons. Yeah. I mean, I was, I walked out of the NESDEC phone call just going, wow, they were, he was awesome. Yeah, and he was I mean, also really clear that we need a lot more, we need more time. I mean, they'll undertake it, but you know, he was not recommending it at all. So maybe that's our, well, I don't know. Can you, because, uh, sorry, I'm not good if I don't, because I wasn't part of the call. Yeah. Yeah. So the whole, their process of getting to a local vision for the educator, how are they going to run that? They have somebody who, I think they they have the, the ability to do outreach and set up focus groups. So somebody would come here and work with the search committee to do that. Okay. Is there anything in the materials that? Yeah. Okay. So that would probably be the comprehensive search, mm -hmm. which is twelve to twenty thousand. Okay. Covers the broad okay. scope of search services requested by most of our clients. Typically includes advertising development active regional and national recruitment, community needs assessment, development of a candidate profile, interview training, and follow-up services such as entry planning and governance training. So how do they do the development of a profile, I think is kind of what we're, what we're looking for. What we're looking for. So how do they go about doing that? Um, it includes, uh, the comprehensive search also includes an experienced search consultant, timeline development, advertising campaign planning, active recruitment, blah, blah, community needs assessment, um, assistance in screening applications, assistance with initial interviews and finalists, management of all search details, ongoing communication with board committee, entry planning, governance, retreat, or executive coaching. So there's really nothing detailing how. Um, I suspect it's less of a need in a lot of these schools, like I know Brookline Mass. Yeah. They've had the yeah. same people, they have people on the board for 20 years. They know their vision, they know their community. That community hasn't changed. Since yeah, John the, F. Kennedy was born. There. One of the things I wrote down about that um, about that process, the, when they're talking about the authentic for, focus groups, they do six to ten of those. They do an electronic survey and interviews, and they present those findings to the board as data to develop the profile or the the, the vision of the, you know the the profile to put in the ad. So that's the process in the beginning. What was the first thing you read? Um, they do focus groups, six to ten focus groups, electronic survey, and, and interviews, and you know, face to face interviews. And then they present that information. That, as they present that. He said, yeah. we print that, present that as data to inform the, the profile for the advertisement, for the job. Yeah, for the, the yeah, advertisement. That's what I've got. Present that as data. Okay. Board as data and evidence of what the community is telling us the successful yeah. candidate profile will include. Okay. <laughs> and that's part of why it takes 120 days. I mean, the challenge, I see like a challenge in kind of maybe in our feeling of values. Maybe it's not necessarily a values challenge, but. I'm reading between or the tea leaves or between the lines or whatever they say. One is a corporate structure. So like, you know, I mean, if we go with them, it's going to be a little more like they're going to present certain things. Things are, and we can ask them for certain things, but mm -hmm. they're also managing a large pocket of folks. So it's not that personalization level that you had said. But you go with somebody smaller, 
or, you know, I mean, they're still an entity, but not a big corporate, then we're, we want more of that personal touch. Um, at the same time, a corporate has become a corporate because they were successful at doing things. Mm -hmm. So there's a value in the corporation, there's also a value in the personal touch, but I guess it depends on with our timelines and with all the things we need done, how much corporate versus personal we can go. And if we do want to piece together stuff, that's just my... Yeah. Because they would probably have less, I'm, I'm thinking, mm -hmm. this is just thinking out loud, but like, I wouldn't think as many people would be involved when, if we hire NASDAQ. I mean, maybe that's not your thought. As many people would be. Meaning like, if we were gonna go with, we had talked about Thrive and mm -hmm. you know, all these kind of putting people no, together. Yeah. The, yeah, we're doing a package. So I mean, it, I don't know how interested they're gonna be in working with 20 other people. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think mm -hmm. we're either picking an organization to do the mm -hmm. thing or we're picking folks that we think have real skills in certain assets in certain areas mm -hmm. to kind of create a hopefully seamless approach. I was uh, worked for a school system in Central Mass for 23 years and we did a couple of superintendent searches so I just want to say it's a, it's a stressful time for everyone, right? But um, the, the timeline still worked. We had a superintendent that resigned in um, like late June, July, and we got to hire somebody by October. You know, um, we hired a full, you know, and it, we did a, and School Spring isn't a terrible tool, actually. It's used so often, and actually when you post a job, I used to manage School Spring. When you post a job, you get a chance to post it on other sites as well. You don't have to pay for them, but they have people of color sites yeah. that you can post it to. So yeah, it. yeah it's, it's great, you know, but um, just, I think that everyone's saying, oh, no winter on the timeline, but I think your timeline can still work if you started in January for, for successful July. Just not try to finish it in March. Yeah, I, I, yeah, and I get the idea that the timelines and, and uh, would someone have to give their notice and such, depending on what that would be, but just to try to help you ease your anxiety, I've been through it. You, you can go through a crunch and you can still find a successful candidate. You, you can really, you. You can really do that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, maybe we need to deal with the possibility that it goes beyond March 17th. Your, Your seat's is... not up, right, Karen? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, are we thinking we're going to have a recommendation for the other board? Or... Not at this point. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I guess, I mean, I'm going to throw my discussion again. I do think, like, you know, we can, we want to be thorough. Mm -hmm. At the same time, if we're talking about this huge deadline, you know, we can't keep pushing it back. So what do we feel about that? Like, when is our deadline for ourselves to, like, get a move on? And what imp if we're, if the deadline's not tonight, what do we need before we hit that deadline and we just have to like call the question? I kind of think the deadline is tonight unless we want to go back to NESDEC and answer some of these, get a better sense of like would they be, be willing to work with Curtis Reed mm -hmm. to try to make sure our ad, you know, is that going to be problematic or not? Because I do think to make sure, you know, I imagine we could do some implicit bias training that would sort of could be concurrent and wouldn't mess with their process, but it might mess with their process and their timeline to have somebody giving input onto how an ad is written in a big structure like that. So maybe there are, fault, maybe there are other follow-up questions like that we might go to, and maybe it could be one of those creative motion-making times where the board <laughs> empowers somebody to answer. <laughs> I'm getting, yeah. By the time I retire, I'll be a ninja at motion-making. <laughs> Um, to empower, you know, to have a preferred structure and then a couple questions to ask, and mm -hmm. if it isn't working with that, because I don't think I don't think we're going to go terribly wrong with any of these options. Honestly, that's no. I think we're no, lucky no, no, no. to have the number that we've got, and so I think we're just trying to find the best way to get the best process mm -hmm. that. Um, 
and to try to get it done relatively quickly. I like it. Which is why I get into the dim sum menu. Like, it, NASDAQ uses their, their right. three to 5,000 that we use somebody to help us vision. We use NASDAQ to do what they do, mm -hmm. which is to do the outreach once we have the vision. They take it and they push it through, and then we think about what else might happen. I do worry about managing all of that. Yeah. That, yeah. You know, if we're not on top of it, something could fall through. Where one company is going in this direction, and the other mm -hmm. company is going there and trying to. And so then the alternative cats at some point. So then I think the alternative is that we have to manage how we have our voice in a corporate process, mm -hmm. and how we make sure that the candidate candidates. Um, have a real sense of what this area has to offer, and that's going to be on us if we go with NESDEQ. So we're going to manage something no matter with any of these. Mm -hmm. They all, they all, unless we're going to break it apart and manage a broken apart process, mm -hmm. we're going to have to manage something extra. So I think we're going to have to really manage. Um, we're going to have to stay on top of the comprehensive search and making sure it's sticking to our vision. If it, that it. it they can, yes. That, yeah. that they are properly creating our vision. But they're not going to be able to sell Browarboro. I don't yeah. see that. I don't yeah. see that happening in a way that I think a local organization could, which I think was really helpful in the Browarboro process. Mm -hmm. was, um, and so I think that, that we'd have to find another way to do that. Mm -hmm. And maybe again, then it's breaking it apart and thinking about it that way. How do we? We could, yeah, I mean, we could also have, what you're saying is we could, I think, or alluding to is like, we could also have somebody, just like we're gonna have more piecemeal if we said like, let's have, um, what was his name, Andy? No, his name's not Andy. Mark, Mark, Mark Andrews. <laughs> um, if we're gonna have Mark do the visioning, Thrive do this, this one do that. I mean, you could also have Mark do the visioning still and hire NASDAQ, right? Mm-hmm. So well, like, yeah. So you could have a personalized approach with Mark who gets up and running quickly and then hand that off. To, I mean, you could still do focus groups and a few other things that are more data oriented, but you want him to create that vision of like, you know, that blurb that mm -hmm. is really nice. Is that, um, oh, yeah. the, um, I think, yeah, I, I think I mean, if, that seems like a middle ground. I yeah, thinking yeah. that way, I think we would, I would like to hear from uh, Mark and from Thrive as far as doing the, the visioning part because we didn't hear a real presentation mm -hmm. from them right. about how they would go about that. We got a, a general outline. I think for Mark, it's the things like identifying key superintendent responsibilities based on current board policy, identifying key priorities for the superintendent to focus on based on the mission values, vision and goals once that's, a, you know, once we have that. Um, essential qualifications, experience, experiences prospective candidates must have. And then create, you know, helping to create the job posting. I think those are those three things specifically in the process we'd like to have his help with because he's he knows this. He knows the job. Know, the local terrain. Yeah. yeah. I have to go get something to eat, or I will not make it through the machine. <laughs> so you, know, so you, you can keep you going. You know, it might be good really for us to adjourn to and just think for a minute too, and and sit with this, and then meet with the. Uh, uh, but Deb had. Okay. Just something I just realized, sorry. Uh, just thinking of NESDIC, I in my mind I had like really expanded them to be this national organization and then just realized they're really they're a regional organization, they're New England. So I think that's yeah. that he, he mentioned that they, they don't have been go down to Pennsylvania, North Carolina, places yeah. like that, but primarily like, yeah. 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 So that made me feel more like, oh they are more local than I was now thinking. Yeah. Yeah. But, but the plus for them is they do have a national network. That's, yeah, and I think and that's, that's where that's yeah. 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 Which is good. Okay. So are we gonna, so, I can't say for the next one. I have to. Have okay, chance. so, so I will let David get food, but so we're, I mean, what, what are we gonna? <laughs> I mean, I'm fine with you guys deliberating in the next meeting too. I mean, do we want to come, uh, I guess we have some ideas that you would be envisioning in the next meeting. We're not really, um, the next Tim? meeting is Tim? Yes. Tim, David, you, me, possibly Kelly. Okay. But so, 
<laughs> I can. I mean, I don't know if this is appropriate, but I can say my opinion from what's gone on. Yes. Okay. okay. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Let's okay. So, yeah. Yes. Okay. That I know is exactly. usually state this right on TV because, but I think that I'd like somebody. I I like the idea of working with somebody like Mark Andrews for the visioning, or Thrive if that's what we had said. I I don't. We didn't hear about on Thrive about the visioning, but I know they did the Towns one, so I'm fine with either, really. But we know he's a superintendent and has some background in education, or a long background, which is really important. Mm -hmm. So, and I think going with somebody like NESDEC with our timelines and knowing that they can get the information out broadly, we said it was important for us to have candidates of color. It's probably more likely if they have a national audience, and mm -hmm. it seems like they have a lot of inroads, and I, I think. I know we could use their proprietary network and all that with a 3,500, but I don't think it's starting to, for me personally, it's too many people. Like if we start breaking it up too much. So I like the local person or local to Vermont and then pair it with somebody who could do like management. management. So, so you know, whole process. I'm hearing for visioning Mark, who's got the educational experience, or Thrive, who's got the local, mm -hmm. and then when that's done, go to NESDEC for management of the rest of the process. That seems to, I mean, that's only my opinion, but okay. I guess because you're okay. going to be chatting about it. And there might be stuff that, I mean, I was very persuaded by <laughs> what you said. I mean, it's, it's true, it's a big undertaking, so it's going to be a lot for us to manage, and the board is already very, very busy. So, do you have a preference or? Since we're voting. <laughs> no, I, mean. I, I like that, I like that preference, and, and I think, um, I think we're getting the both the best of two organizations for okay. this. It might be interesting to think about Mark and Thrive working on the visioning process. Okay. Because yeah. be you're bringing as somebody who has an outside view, who's intimately familiar with the educational scene in Vermont and the superintendent position, and mm -hmm. somebody who really understands mm -hmm. the local. Um, and you like NESDEC for management as well? We'll see. So are we thinking we need to ask people more questions? Are we thinking we're not ready for a, is this a, we should talk at the next meeting about what's next? Or how do we, I hate leaving it hanging so that we we're not ready hang, to go. The, I think the next board actually is the decider. Okay. But I think if there's a consensus among this committee that will mm -hmm. probably, and it may, you know, there may be tweaks on this and, mm -hmm. and there may be questions, but I think I could imagine a motion where the board chair in consultation with the committee chair could go forward to um, make those final decisions about how we create a visioning group and, how, and what package we work with NESDEC and then um, move forward from there and get this show get the party started all right so I just added I like somebody for visioning I can't decide between mark or thrive I'm not sure I like the idea of trying to hybrid those two together just from the management point of view of who's calling who to say hey meet here I, I don't know I just I I see us having a hard enough time showing up at all of our meetings but to try to be going did mark call thrive did thrive call mark mm -hmm. Um, and then NESDEC, I, I feel like, okay, we're all actually Why, can, can you just answer, because it was, it sort of turned me off that nobody in that large organization can, could take a call between 4.30 and 7 o'clock at night. What would, did they, they just don't work after? That kind of turned me off, honestly. Uh, well, else. he, it seemed as if he wanted to be the one to talk to us. Okay, so they didn't, they um, didn't but it over. No, 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 um, I'm trying to think, this is art. I mean, he was very attentive by email okay. and just, yep, no problem. Uh, and I mean, they were right on it. If I was better on my emails, I could. Thank you. I'll send you a yeah, I mean, he set up the whole conference call. Let's see. Sorry, sorry. I mean, he gave me a cell phone number. <laughs> Let's see. 
like I'm, or is he like, is I'm he like the intake the... the intake guy and nobody else does those things and so it wouldn't be an issue going forward if we're having um, evening meetings and it's... oh I regret I do not have a consultant available to meet with you and your exploratory committee on December 19th okay. we think it's important to remain fully focused on our clients needs in order to guarantee blah 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 while we're not able to meet with you on that date we'd be happy to explore other dates and a time when it might be convenient um, so I don't know if we just picked a bad night. I mean it. <laughs> okay. I guess that was just my initial like, huh. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, you yeah. know, Susan Holson was somewhere, but an organization of two could cough up somebody to answer the questions yeah. and we we'll get back for it, you know. Yeah. So, I don't know. That was just my, my that was my corporate life feeling. But that's, <laughs> that may be totally unfounded. Yeah. At your meeting tonight, or the WSCSU meeting, mm -hmm. Even if, so I mean, I wasn't actually clear what's going to go on there. Is it that you're going to approve one of, you're going to like make a decision? If, if we can. If you can, you're going to make a decision. I don't think we have to. Yeah. I, I think it is a, if we feel like there is a consensus mm -hmm. that we could move forward with. Otherwise, we can try to move forward on our own or we can kick it back to you. <laughs> well, I was just going to say one other option. If, if we need more mm -hmm. information from NESDEQ, right, mm -hmm. if we're a little worried about it, mm -hmm. you could say, like, this is the best option we see right now. Mm -hmm. We can start moving forward with a visioning process if that's what we're saying, if it's going to be hybrid. Right. Mm -hmm. And then say, okay, we're going to just get the information we need. Mm -hmm. NESDEQ's our top candidate for this at this moment. Mm -hmm. And as long as things come back a-okay, okay, mm -hmm. You know, I mean, then we'd have, I mean, you delay that decision, but maybe don't delay the visioning, because I just feel like something needs to get started. I agree. Yeah. I so agree. Just a yes. thought. I agree. So I would love to take a, um, I would love to take a break just for, yeah, sorry. I'm so, I'm the one who's ending the meeting. <laughs> so, do um, I, okay, so, uh, do I move? I mean, yeah, I um, I think I heard Christina move to adjourn. I did, I moved. And to I seconded it. it. <laughs> okay. Everybody in favor? Yeah, I. Okay. Christina moved. No names, no names.